While the world watched in horror the COVID-19 decimating large cities in India, the virus stealthily began to devastate rural India. While oxygen shortages caused suffering to healthcare workers and patients in larger cities, the rural folks could not even make it out of their villages. And rural areas in India have been plagued with very poor infrastructure. Rural folk would often die on their way to the larger hospitals and towns. And even when they managed to get there, they would often be sent back with no hospital beds available. When patients were, uh, were able to get beds, they often found it hard to pay for the care received in private hospitals due to the exorbitant cost and out-of-pocket paying model that's vastly prevalent in India. To solve the problem, a group of concerned citizens led by J.K. Ayana, Brigadier Devaya, Rajiv joined hands with Karuna Trust, an international NGO taking care of primary healthcare needs in India. Scanray Technologies, uh, Mr. Alwa and Dr. Amrit Nanaya from Lopamudra Medical Center, a hospital in Kodagu, to set up a dedicated COVID high dependency unit. Organizations like Kodawa Kuta and Dina Bandhu, along with many philanthropists, helped raise funds to set up the hospital and provide care for patients. This was set up in a rural village in Karnataka, India, in the Western Ghats. The group decided to treat patients for free. Philanthropists even provided food to take care of patients in the hospitals. Once decided, the hospital was set up in about a week. This on the face of a pandemic and a national lockdown. Funds were mobilized, oxygen supply chains established, beds and health infrastructure procured, doctors and nurses hired. With the help of infectious disease physicians at the University of Florida, led by Professor Southwick, a protocol was developed for settings with limited resources. A telemedicine facility was developed so that physicians at the center could discuss complicated cases with ID physicians in the US daily. The protocols were revised based on feedback from physicians at the COVID care center. Admission, transfer, and discharge protocols were developed, considering that the closest tertiary hospital was about an hour and a half away. Labs were restricted to total count, CRP, absolute lymphocyte count, creatinine, liver function tests, D-dimer. More labs were only ordered if necessary and depending on the patient's condition. Treatment involved either remdesivir, dexamethasone, and in a few patients, interleukin-6 inhibitors like tocilizumab. No antibiotics were used. Before the center became operational, ID physicians from the US trained healthcare workers on infection control practices, pathophysiology, clinical features, diagnosis, and management of COVID-19 disease. This was indeed a multinational, multidisciplinary collaboration to fight the COVID-19 pandemic and show that with commitment and dedicated members in a team, no region has to suffer the despairs of the pandemic. So now we're gonna show you um, a few examples of telemedicine collaborations across the world. I want to introduce you to Dr. Amrit Nanaya, MD, um, the physician taking care of patients at the COVID care center in Atur village in Kodagu um, in Karnataka, South India. I also want to introduce you to Kalpa, one of the physicians uh, taking care of uh, the patients in the COVID care center who will present cases today. Okay. So the first patient who I'll be presenting is uh, uh, in the range of 70 to 80 years old, a lady who is today on her 12th day of illness. She is a known case of diabetes, hypertension, asthma, and ischemic heart disease. Uh, she has a new to score of six today, which has increased since yesterday. And she has a CT of nine, CT score of nine on 25. Her uh, saturation is 94% on one liter of oxygen and in room air it's 88%. She has no fresh complaints today. Uh, we had started her on remdesivir. We had given her three doses of remdesivir and then we held back since her uh, serum creat was on the higher side. And uh, we, today she's on her sixth dose of uh, steroids, dexamethasone. And she's also on uh, heparin. Uh, her labs are, um, as of today, her creat is uh, better. It's 1.5. And uh, yesterday it was 1.68, which is why we have decided if we could give her fourth dose of remdesivir tomorrow after a 72 hour gap. Whereas her CRP is 31, her ALC is 1200, and um, her D dimer was 
1,094. So uh, how do you think she's doing? What's your impression? Um, so her Kriya values have come down. So I think we could uh, go ahead with the fourth dose since we held it for the past 72 hours. And overall, do you, how do you think your she, COVID-19 or SARS-CoV-2 infection is uh, responding? What do you think? Um, I think it responds well to remdesivir when it's given within uh, one week of the illness. Yeah, her, her lymphocyte count now is up to 1,200. It's improved. So that's, that's yes, a improved. very good sign. And uh, her, uh, her CRP is going down, which indicates that the methadone is working. So all, all parameters are D-dimer stable. I would say it's, it's the same but it is not going yes. up significantly. So I think she has a severe disease that is slowly improving and there is evidence for response to remdesivir. So uh, what do you want, do you want to change anything? I think we could go ahead with the fourth dose of remdesivir tomorrow. Right, so we'll continue the dexamethasone, give the, the fourth dose of remdesivir. And I'm very encouraged. I think she's gonna do, do well. Great, next case. So uh, the next case I'll be presenting is um, a lady who is in the age group of 60 to 70 years. She's a known hypertensive on medications. Today is her 10th day of illness and uh, her news to score is six. It was four on admission and now it has progressed to six. Uh, her saturation today is 94% with one liter of oxygen and on room air it is 88%. Her respiratory rate uh, is, has reduced to 38. It was 44 yesterday. Uh, she has finished her entire course of re injection remdesivir, all five doses. And today she is on her sixth uh, day of steroids, dexamethasone. She's also on heparin. And um, her labs, her CRP has reduced from 99 to 5.8. Her um, lymphocyte, absolute lymphocyte count has increased from 800 to 1000. And uh, her D-dimer has increased a little from 93 to 463. Her CT score was 15 on 25 at admission. But she, her um, saturation seems to be, her oxygen demand seems to be worsening because um, at admission, her saturation was way better. Yes, yeah, so uh, she seems a little bit worse. Uh, Gautam, what do you think? Yeah, yeah I think uh, she's, she's, she's definitely a lot worse than she was yesterday. Um, yes. And how is she clinically, uh, Kalpa? Uh, she seems fatigued and uh, very easily fatigued, especially if she has to move out of her bed. She seems very fatigued. Do you think we should consider mm -hmm. uh, her CRP is relatively low, so I don't know that she would benefit from telisimab. What do you yeah. think, Adam? Yeah, exactly. Um, th though, you know, she came with a CRP of 99, which went down to 34, just gone up a little bit, but she does not still meet the criteria for tocilizumab. So, so I guess uh, we, we, we will continue to watch her and, uh, you know, kind of closely monitor her clinically uh, to see, you know, to kind of uh, make sure that she's not uh, uh, going into any respiratory failure as such. The next patient uh, is uh, an, a lady who is uh, within the age range of 60 to 70. She is a known hypertensive and diabetic. She is today, today is her 10th day of illness. Her news to score was six on admission. It had increased to eight and now it is uh, it has reduced to seven today. She was on 30 liter uh, of O2 on high flow nasal, but um, but today it's uh, we have reduced it to 20 liter and her saturation is maintained at 95%. Her respiratory rate has also come down has come down to 32 per minute. Her CT score was 18 on 25 at admission, and um, we uh, gave her uh, one. We gave her two doses of remdesivir that was given, and um, we had held it back because her creat was on the higher side. And uh, today we will be giving the third. Her uh, creat was 
four and uh, earlier now it's come down to 1.3 her d dimer was 1085 but now it's uh, 1495 her crp was 143 and now it is 72 and her absolute lymphocyte count was 1000 and today it is 1500 uh, we have also given her uh, we had given her tocilizumab when she was worsening but now uh, her she her crp is reducing and she is showing an improvement yeah are any thoughts anything else we need to do with her what do you think no amrit uh, any thoughts from your side uh, she is doing uh, fine uh, dr gautam but uh, you no know, the oxygen requirement we thought we will just be reducing the fio2 and uh, like uh, discussed yesterday we thought we'll keep the flow rate slightly on the higher side uh, to give that extra peep and we will start reducing the fio2 and see how she does good yeah i think she's i think she's improving she's definitely improving her lymphocyte count is up her crp is down um so i think i think we're making some headway it's slow it's a slow recovery but we're 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 moving in the right direction right and she is um, um and and dr amrit she is a diabetic is she i forget yes uh, she is a non diabetic yeah she goes on uh, well under control yeah uh, she's diabetic she's getting metformin and insulin because when the creatinine had gone up we were thinking of uh, reducing metformin or stopping metformin but now that she's stable we are continuing her with insulin only very good uh good evening dr southwick and dr gautam i'll be uh, briefing up the summary about the work what have what we have been doing uh, since the past one month we started our covid ward on the 15th of may last month and we have ever since then we have admitted up to 67 patients of the 67 patients our average in hospital uh, duration of each of the patients were 4.5 days uh 30 of our patients of the 67 patients have received remdesivir 45 of them uh, we have uh, given dexamethasone 43 of them required oxygen and tocilizumab was given to two of our patients a uh, 10 of them required antibiotics and the antibiotics was used for urinary tract infections and one patient who had osteomyelitis there was a documented uh, evidence of infection and antibiotics was not used for covid-19 pneumonia per se we lost one of our patients a 88 year old lady uh, for covid who was rapidly progressing another patient we had to shift her to an icu because her oxygen requirement was going high and she was deteriorating uh, but for these two patients uh, all our other patients have gone home after uh, being cured of covid thank you